today I'm taking a book at the Second Forgotten Realms novel to be put out by TSR, and the book which is considered to be more of a jumping-on point to the Forgotten Realms, The Crystal Shard. More than Dark Walker on Moonshade, the, the first novel to bear the logo, logo of the realms, which I need to get around to reviewing at some point, The Crystal Shard by R.A. Salvatore has achieved a much higher level of mainstream penetration and also the introduction of probably the most famous or infamous character in fantasy fiction, Dritz de Werden. Also, unlike Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman's Dragonlance works, The Crystal Shard is l a less conventional quest narrative. Instead, it starts out more of a war story, with the area of ten towns in the northern reaches of the well, since main continent, Verun, um, facing impending destruction at the hands of a barbarian horde. This leads local ranger, Dritz de Werden, Drow Elf, to enlist the help of his friends, Bruno ba Brenor Battlehammer, the leader of the local dwarf settlement, and Regis, a halfling and semi-retired thief who has fit into the general political power structure of the Ten Towns, to work together to unite the otherwise at-odd settlements of the Ten Towns into a force that can repel this invasion. Dritz needs their help because he's a rejected outcast, because he's a drow, and most other drow are, at this point, actually... Not just most other drow, at this point, exclusively all the other drow that we've seen depicted have been shown as evil. The man to succeed, yea, barely. Though in the aftermath, Brenar takes up captured barbarian youth Wolfgar as a ward to work off his debt to the people of Ten Towns. Time skip several years into the future. Um, during this period, we have a meddling wizard from Luskan named Alkar Kessel, who finds a sentient magical artifact called Krishenavan, which saves him from death after he's manipulated into killing his mentor and then left for dead by two other wizards from the host tower of Luskan. Um, allows Kessel to survive and slowly begin to accumulate power. First building a fortification, and then building a force of goblins and giants and various other creatures, and eventually getting a demon on his side named Ertu. Ertu having his own designs on the artifact. So, during this part of the story as well, we shift point of view characters a little bit. We still have Buenor and Britst and Regis as POV characters, including with Big, long spiels of um, notes from Dritt's journal, his very introspective journal, uh, in between major chapters. But now also Wolfgar becomes a prominent viewpoint character in the story, as he's being trained to be a better fighter by Dritz. This leads to Wolfgar deciding, all right, I'm going to, because I've lived among the, the dwarves and seen the human settlements and that sort of thing, I'm going to go back to my people, and I'm going to try and turn them from the path they're currently on and get them to coexist with the townspeople, with, with, with the people of Tense Town, the, the ordinary humans, as opposed to the big, strong, mighty thewed barbarians of the northern plains. So, consequently, as a narrative goes, as a standalone book, which is what this was when it originally came out, yes, there was a larger Icewind Dale trilogy in mind, and this book ends with a sequel hook, it's also incredibly self-contained, and it's not particularly, it's not a challenging narrative. It's, a lot of ways, the fantasy equivalent of the airport novel, an adventure story with engrossing characters and a fun but ultimately shallow story that is, on its own, divorced from the larger context of, context of the Dritz de series, divorced from the fact that this is the first published Dritz de novel, and divorced from the fact that it is the fourth novel in the series, chronologically, including the Drow Elf trilogy and a bunch of other stuff, this is the point, the worst of all of that, it just works fine as a standalone book. But it's not a grabs you and captures your interest standalone book. It's, it's just okay. Which, there are worse things for a book to be, certainly. Though in its own way, the book demonstrates something that is absolutely lacking in modern fantasy fiction. Most fantasy novels anymore tend to emulate something like Game of Thrones or Wheel of Time with big, long-form epic fantasy series. And smaller, more compact, self-contained narratives like this book 
don't really exist anymore. Even if you do get a standalone fantasy novel, it's a big, thick hardcover. We're not in the same way dealing with the sort of small standalone paperbacks that you could theoretically pick up at a, again, I'll bring up the airport novel here, but it's the ultimate perfect example here. It's something you can pick up for 5 or $4, even like in mid-90s, late early 2000s the money, pick up from a newsstand in an airport or at a grocery store or something like that for going on a bus ride or train trip or something or plane flight and be able to finish it in the course of the flight because... It's riveting and engrossing, but not necessarily mind-blowing. And if you left it on the plane, you don't feel like you lost out. You don't feel like, oh, I need to go back and get that. This book has changed my life. I need to share it with my friends. Nor if you're like, oh, there's a lot of nuance here. I need to reread it over and over to get every, pick every little bit and piece off of the uh, carcass of this story. After having consumed it utterly the first time through. So, Crystal Shard is available in print, both alone and in an omnibus with the rest of the Icewind Dale trilogy. Kindle as a Kindle edition and audiobook editions from Amazon.com. In the show notes below, you will be able to find uh, referral links to where you can get them. It, it's, it's something worth picking up. It's like, this type of book probably, in whatever form it still exists now, is definitely something that still exists and would probably thrive in the Kindle store more than anything else. But, and indeed, that's probably a good place to do it. It's a good commute read. It's good for the train or what have you. It's perfect for those circumstances. And again, it's perfectly available in a format that works for that, for your phone or tablet or whatever these days. So check that out. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>